Part two readings. Reading number two. Title: Racialist National Socialism. All National Socialism is nationalistic, as the name implies, but not all of it is racially exclusive. The best known variety of such racialist fanaticism arose in Germany and Scandinavia, where, between the wars, popular and racial self-expression were merged into one very dynamic movement, which pretended to guarantee social and economic justice for the in group at the expense of all outsiders, particularly. Jews, who appeared as the incarnation of the disruptive alien elements these creeds shun, the passages which follow show the transition from the early and matter-of-fact statement of such views to an increasingly metaphysical and crackpot vision of somber and diabolic forces at work in history. The first program of the Nazi Party is taken from the excellent presentation of National Socialism prepared by Raymond E. Murphy and published by the United States Department of State in 1943. The brief quotation from Nazism's leading doctrinaire Alfred Rosenberg is designed to mark the transition to the strange rhetoric of the Norwegian apostle of racialism Vidkun Quisling. Whose anti-communism gave him the ear of many respectable men in the West before his wartime collaboration with the German invaders of his land provided a new term for treachery. End of Eugen Weber's foreword for reading number two. Reading number two B, entitled Alfred Rosenberg: The Myth of the Twentieth Century, 1930. Asterix. From Michael Oakenshot, the social and political doctrines of contemporary Europe, Cambridge University Press, Cambridge, 1939, pages 200 to 201. History and vocation no longer consist in struggle of class against class, church dogma against dogma, but in the struggle between blood and blood, race and race, people and people. And this means values of soul fight against values of soul. That history must be judged from the point of view of race is a truth which will soon be self-evident. But the values of the soul of race, which are the motive powers behind the new philosophy, are not yet part of actual general knowledge. Now, soul means race seen from within. Conversely, race is the outside of a soul. To call to life the soul of race is to recognize its supreme value and, under its guidance, to give the other values their organic position in state, religion, and in art. This is the task of our century: to create a new type of man out of a new myth of life. In the midst of the most terrible collapse, the old Nordic soul of race wakes up to new, higher consciousness. It sees at last that different and necessarily mutually exclusive supreme values must not coexist with equal rights. It sees that what is related to its soul and race may be fitted in, but that the foreign must be ruthlessly rejected and, if need be, fought down, not because it is wrong or bad in itself, but because it is foreign to the kind and destroys the internal construction of. Our nature. End of reading two B.